everybody. We're Team 13. Our team is composed of Daniela Chavez Guevara, Daniel Stegewald, and myself, Samuel Watt. And today we're going to present to you our project title, Electromagnetically Controlled Flow Separation. Here is an overview of, and the idea throughout the presentation on our project. And at the end, we'll have a brief question session. Now, Daniela is going to talk to you about flow control and types of flow control. So what is flow separation? Flow separation is going to occur at the boundary layer T layer, and it's going to be a detachment that is due to the molecules of the flow losing momentum. You can see here a video of flow separation on a turbine plate. Now, we have two types of control, flow control separation. We have an active and a passive type. An active type can be shut off when we need it. And an example are plasma actuators. A passive type it doesn't require external power or additional weight but it cannot be shut on or off when we need it. For example, here we have an active control system acting to control a bone carbonate effect on a cylinder. For our project, we're using an active flow control separation mechanism. This is going to work because it's going to add momentum to the near wall flow. Now, we have two types of control method separate uh, mechanisms. One that is going to depend on air, and the other one that is going to depend on salt and water. DVD actuators or plasma actuators are usually used when the gas is air, and electromagnetic actuators, which use, which use the electrohydrodynamic theory, are usually used when the fluid is salt and water. You can see here how a plasma actuator is acting. The ionized gas is inducing velocity to the air stream, and you can see here a picture of the exposed of it. So, since our for a project, what we want to do is we want to control the, or minimize the flow separation within a Delaval nozzle. Therefore, we are mixing the concept of using a plasma actuator with the electrohydrodynamic theory in order to minimize the separation. Now, Sam is going to tell you about the importance of flow separation management inside a nozzle. So, in the case of a nozzle, you have two types of flow separation occurring. The first one is the free shock separation in which the separation at the exit part of the nozzle, uh, the flow actually never reattaches itself. And the restricted, restricted shock separation case where the flow actually reattaches several ways, several in several uh, parts along the exit of the nozzle. These two types of separations both cause asymmetrical side loads with which decrease the lifetime use of an actual nozzle and reduce the thrust efficiency. So controlling flow separation is very important in such devices. Now Dan is going to talk to you about the case for an airfoil. So in the case of an airfoil, the flow separation causes a higher form drag on the airfoil as well as higher friction within the turbulent boundary layer. You can see here when the flow is not controlled, the flow separates and goes way over the airfoil. So. Therefore, the flow separation is reduced, drag is also reduced, and the uh, fuel efficiency of the aircraft can be increased. And here you can see the flow is reattached using a plasma actuator. So the challenges of this project are flow separation, since it causes wear and reduces the thrust efficiency in the Delaval nozzle. Also, visualization of the flow separation, which depends on the dimensions of the nozzle. Also, the CFD analysis can be very time consuming. Therefore, we have to come up with design alternatives to reduce the time necessary to complete the analysis. And also, power consumption is a limiting factor since it depends on the breakdown voltage of the fluid being studied. So the solutions to these problems is, first, to use electrodes in order to control the flow separation which are very practical since they have no additional mechanical moving parts. We're going to use a planar nozzle rather than one with a circular cross section since it will be easier to visualize. And here is an example of a planar nozzle. We are going to be using 2D flow analysis to simulate the 3D flow for our CFD. And that will make the time necessary to complete the computations much quicker. And finally, we'll be using salt and water since it has ions already available in solution that can be easily broken down and therefore has a relatively low breakdown voltage. So, for the 
for project objective, we have two main objectives, and the first one is to actually do a multi-objective design optimization, which, has, which contains three main goals. The first one being minimize and discretize flow separation in a, the Laval nozzle. The second one is to achieve a more uniform flow at the exit of the nozzle. And lastly, we'll minimize the power used by the electrohydrodynamic actuators by varying the electric field intensity. And of course, the second main objective is to build the prototype of the nozzle and the actual testing setup to validate the results which were uh, done on the CFD analysis. Here's the methodology that will, follow, that will be followed through the project. The first phase, which is already completed, is the research and the theory behind plasma actuators and electrohydrodynamic. Um, then we're in the second phase where we'll use SOLIDWORKS for the design of the nozzle and then COMSOL to achieve the CFD analysis where we will couple the flow, um, the two modules, flow and electrostatics. And lastly, of course, we'll perform the multi-objective design optimization. So what we're using to control flow separation is the concept of a plasma actuator applied to salted water to create an electrohydrodynamic force to control flow separation. So some considerations in the design of a actuator are the electrodes where they are placed and particularly the distance between the electrodes as that changes the region of electric field interaction. Also, the dielectric material connecting the electrodes, since different materials have different dielectric strengths and dielectric constants. And we're going to be using an AC voltage source. So we must uh, choose a magnitude and frequency for the voltage that will give us the desired force for our application. Next, for planar nozzle design, uh, it's going to be non-isometric, non-axisymmetric. We have taken different measurements uh, for the thickness, the, work, the height, and the measurements also for the divergent section. We plan to discretize the flow separation at different sections. We have numbered them here from one to four. And this planar nozzle is going to help us to visualize way better or control when we use the electrics. So in the case for how are we going to visualize this flow separation inside this planar nozzle, we have three uh, cases. The first one is a direct injection of a dye into the flow. And what happens here is that this dye must actually have the same density as the, uh, as the fluid that you're testing it on, uh, that you want to observe the separation or the streamline. Second, it must travel around the same speed as the, as the flow. And lastly, it will introduce no disturbances to the flow. The other two cases uh, both use fluorescent dyes. The first one is, is excited by a laser uh, laser sheet, and the second one is just uh, uh, excited by UV light. So our initial design for an experimental setup consists of a 75-gallon tank, um, a PVC pipe system, uh, to 60 gallons per minute a pump that's going to accelerate the flow. We have an expansion section here to connect the PVC pipe to the inlet of the nozzle. Now Sam is going to tell you more about the engineering standards and the global learnings that we have used. So <coughs> the three main standards here that we're looking at is the first one is from ASMEs just to validate the CFD results that we, have, that we will obtain in the future. And the other two deal with <coughs> actually how to handle the power supply and how to actually safely connect it to our nozzle. So for the uh, global learning part, we uh, uh, the electrohydrodynamic actuators can actually be applied to any shape nozzle. It doesn't have to be a planar nozzle like we're testing. Um, the flow separation, as you observed in, in the past cases, it actually happens in many applications. Uh, you can see more of it in the aerospace industry than and actually many publications and experiments has been performed not specifically on a nozzle, it has been done like on the airport and other uh, other parts. The analysis done by us will be both in English units and SI units, and we'll lastly look at publishing a paper with uh, to share our findings because uh, our experiment uh, hasn't been done before. So as a conclusion from our previous research and from what we have been showing you here, we can say that to, co to minimize and control flow separation within a Delaval nozzle, it is possible to apply the plasma filter concept. Um, also because it's a lightweight act active system and it's no longer important to much input power. We know how to select the fluid.
another thing that is really important about this project is that it hasn't been done before. It's uh, something that is being trying experiment experimentally right now, and it represents a new challenge for us as engineers. For the future work, or the following work that we'll be performing, we'll be uh, complete, uh, we'll be doing the CFD analysis on the NACA 0015 airflow just to validate the console settings that we're using and then use those settings in the nozzle itself. So we know those settings actually represent real world application. Um, and then we'll perform the multi objective design optimization. We'll perform a cost analysis and do a whole part list. We'll manufacture the nozzle and set the whole uh, experimental setup and we'll gather the results, test it, and put all the findings into a final report. Any questions? Any questions for the team? Okay. Um, the use of seawater or salt water to do the separation, I, I do understand why you're doing it, but is there a real life application where you would use uh, sea, uh, salt water um, in in the system. Well, you can use it in nuclear power plants. Also, we know that the Air Force has been doing the research to make uh, compact uh, nuclear, reactors. nuclear reactors. So, if we can prove that it can work with salt water, which is a conductive fluid, we can also use that same concept and change the fluid. And maybe we'll have to change our electrodes optimization, how we're going to arrange them. What other but fluids would you use? Liquid metal. Liquid metal, yes. You could use liquid metal. Like what? That, um, I forgot it was potassium. Yeah. No, yes, yes. Potassium, yeah. Yes. I think they have done it. And you can also use it to conduct to, for, remember what happened in, uh, in China, I think, uh, the accident, the nuclear, reactor accident. So now they are trying to cool down the reactor. So for that cooling system, they are using liquid metal to like have a, have a more safety environment. So we also thought that if we can prove that this, this can work, we can even apply it to that. Okay, thank Talk to me about your testing. What are you going to What are you going to test? What are you going to generate here? We're going to be using the pump to accelerate the fluid. We have done previous research on it. Um, the experimentation that they have done is using a 10 meter and input velocity of salt water of 10 meters per second and 5 meters per second. Now, what due to cost, um, mainly due to cost, what we're using is a pump that is. It, it, this pump allows us to accelerate the flow to 4.23 meters per second. We have done the calculations. Um, we can also show those calculations. So the point is that if we use a planar nozzle, if we could use a three-dimensional three nozzle, if we use a planar nozzle, we can visualize the flow even better. Uh, we have observed that at the University of Illinois, in their fluid dynamics lab, they have to do the same thing just to visualize flow separation. Just a plane or not just to visualize flow separation. So we say that if we use uh, salted water going at 4.23 meters per second, and then we accelerate it just enough at the top. So it takes us at the divergent section. We can just get that right velocity to, sh to see, to show you the f how the flow separation is occurring. And then with the electrodes, we will have to take in consideration like the size and the shape. We can be able to show how the aid of the visualization, the type visualization, we can be able to show how the flow is going to be attached. So you, you're, just just to be clear, you you're only looking to use seawater or have this experiment be seawater and liquid metal purpose. Is that correct? For now, those are the two applications we've seen. Yes. So, um, on, at the beginning of your of your presentation, you introduced your whole project, mentioning how flow separation impacts the aerospace industry, specifically fuel burn. How are you trying? How are you trying to tie your experiment to 
uh, aircraft application. The simulations. We, if we get the same result for the experimental, using for the experimental analysis using salt of water, and we get the same results or within like a five percent or ten percent range of error for the console simulation, then we can say that we are within a, 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 we have good results. And also another way that, as Samit, as Samit mentioned, that we're going to validate it is if we use the airfoil on the NACA 015 airfoil, in which previous experimentations have, have also been done, then we set up, the, we, we plan to set up first that simulation so we can get the same results that previous researchers have gotten. And that way, we just change the shape of the nozzle. Instead of an airfoil, so in general, uh, we will get experimentation based on airflow. Then we'll set our setting, the same settings. We'll do the simulation, and then we'll put those settings inside a nozzle. And that's how we say, oh, hey, our simulation actually is using real-world results. We're not just coming up with something and saying, well, yeah, this, this looks about to be right. And then again, we're not measuring uh, thrust or anything like that in a nozzle. We're just employing this. Uh, uh, electrohydrodynamic concept to the nozzle to achieve, uh, to re reduce flow separation. <coughs> we will not be measuring uh, how much thrust you develop from the nozzle testing. Okay. Dr. Liu, do you have a comment? Can you talk to me a little bit about the economic aspect of it? Um, we will be, we were looking at a bump. Uh, we haven't come up with a final cost for the entire setup but it reaches around $2,000 for the entire thing. The pile being the most expensive at $400. And how do you plan to fund that? Um, mostly personal. This is still um, one of the independent projects, so they're not funded by companies, and they're not competing in any competition. So if you don't read it, it's coming. Just a quick question. Uh, your main objective is to reduce the flow separation by 5%. Is that correct? Yes, that's what, how we are planning to discretize it. But we have to improve that discretization method. Once we finish setting up the console simulation, that's what we are going to do. That's why we had like, we're expecting to see flow separation in different regions, but based, that will be based on the reflection of the angle for the divergence section. And then based on that, and on the console simulation results that we're going to get, is how we're going to come up with a discretization of the flow separation strategy for a project. And you, and you think that's achievable? Yes. Yes. That is achievable. As you can see here, just the recent experiment, this, this is 100% separation. And this is a lot more than 5% the attachment of the airport. What we're doing instead of using an external flow that you have here, like for the airport, we're using an internal flow. Like, so that's going to be the challenge. Quick, quick question. That your findings would be extrapolated to non conductive fluids like air, for example. I think it was his concern about yeah. it. I mean, what, what you guys are expecting to find as a plasma actuator, can, can you guys extrapolate that for, for the aerospace industry? Or yes, yes, we could. The thing is, when you change that fluid, again, you need more power. Uh, you need, for air, they were using in this testing, uh, around 6,000 volts just to uh, reattach the flow. But we can show those findings on the simulation. We're just limited for, for our experimental setup. But we say if that works with salt and water, and we just increase the voltage, and then we change the frequency, and also we play with the electric field uh, between the electrodes, we can also show that. It will just change the power supply. Well, thank you. Thank you very much.